This boy lost his dad in the deadly waves of the ocean, but he is not ready to accept it. As soon as he gets a chance, he grabs a boat and travels to the deadliest island to find his dad. Felix is a 12 years old boy who lives with his mother Marlene, his baby sister, and pet cat Rover. Marlene has been taking care of the house and the kids alone for the last two years since her husband disappeared. Her sister Annie suggests that Marlene should take a break and go on a vacation. Annie is willing to take care of her kids for a few days. Marlene agrees, but it's not easy for her to leave the kids, especially the younger one who just started walking. Marlene gives Annie a long list of instructions and asks her to call her if there's any problem. Annie promises to be responsible and sends Marlene off. As soon as she leaves, Felix also packs a few things and tells Annie that he is going to stay at his friend Max's house for a few days. As Marlene had already given him the permission, Annie doesn't stop him. However, Felix is not going to meet his friend. He rushes to the seaport and meets a sailor named Tom. Felix asks Tom to start the journey as soon as possible so they can return before his mother's trip ends. He is planning to visit the island where his father went missing. Felix has been waiting for this chance for the whole two years. However, Tom keeps playing his card game and ignores Felix. When Felix starts insisting, Tom finally says that he has changed his mind. Their mission is too dangerous as the winds are really wild around the island they want to visit. The Coast Guards did their best to find Felix's dad but failed. No one spotted him in the past two years, so it's possible that he may have died already. Hearing this, Felix decides to go with the plan B. He will start this mission by himself, but needs someone to cover for his absence. Felix rushes to his friend, Max, and explains to him the whole situation. He has told his mom that he will be traveling with Max to a nearby town, so Max must not leave the house. Otherwise, Annie may figure out they lied. Max agrees to help, so Felix grabs his little motorboat and gets in the sea. After traveling a small distance, the motor stops working. Moreover, the waves get wild and drown the poor kid and his cat. Suddenly, Felix sees a ship coming towards his way. It's Tom who arrived to save him. He wants to take Felix back, but Felix starts getting sad because he will never be able to see his dad again. Tom reminds Felix that he was just about to die because of his stupidity. It's better for him to give up. Felix starts crying like a baby, and Tom feels pity for him. He agrees to help him on one condition. After checking the island, Felix will never think about finding his father again. Felix agrees, and the next morning, they get in the boat and sail in the vast sea. Tom checks Felix's bag and rejects all the stuff he brought. Life at sea is not the same as life at the shore. Felix needs to understand that one can only bring necessary stuff to the sea. After sailing for a few hours, Tom prepares the dinner and sits down to eat with Felix. The kid seems in deep thoughts and asks Tom about the rumored hidden treasure on the Dark Shadow Island. Legends also say that there's a giant spider called Morgaya who guards the treasure. Tom believes that the treasure is just a myth sailors made up by themselves. However, Felix's dad believed in the story and decided to visit the Island. He took this risk because he was facing financial issues as the fish plant shut down. Felix feels sorry for his dad and wishes to find him as soon as possible. The next morning, Tom gives Felix a chance to steer the ship. He keeps guiding the boy as his dad would have done the same. Suddenly they notice the dark clouds ahead. The whole island is surrounded by such clouds, wild waves and giant reefs. Tom tells Felix to get his life jacket while he controls the ship. His parrot spots the reefs and guides Tom. Unfortunately, the ship eventually hits a reef and crashes. Luckily, Felix and Tom survive and proceed to the island. It's really late at night, so they start looking for a place to rest. Suddenly, Felix notices a tree with Tom's name engraved on it with the letters MC. Tom confesses that he has visited the island before. At that time, he was 25 and was hoping to find the treasure of Morgaya. He came to this island with his girlfriend, Madeline. Tom really wanted to impress her and that's why he brought her to this island. But one day, she suddenly disappeared. Tom looked everywhere but there was no clue of Madeline. He visited the island again three times with rescue teams but failed to find Madeline. He assumed that she may have fallen into the ocean and died. That's the reason Tom stopped visiting the island because it reminds him of the unfortunate incident. The next morning, Tom and Felix start searching the island. Rover notices a squirrel and runs after it. He eventually ends up at a small hole in a mountain and doesn't hesitate to get inside it. Felix keeps calling Rover to come back but there's no response. Meanwhile at the town, Max is still busy playing video games. Like Felix instructed him, he didn't leave his house. After a few days he runs out batteries for his controller. 
Max can't afford to lose the video game so he steps out of the house to buy new batteries. Unfortunately, he runs into Annie who immediately asks about Felix. Max is really bad at lying, and he tells Annie the whole truth about Felix traveling to the island. Annie rushes back home and sends a voice message to Marlene asking her to contact back as soon as possible. Annie is still stressing out because of Felix and the baby is throwing tantrums as well. On top of that, a real estate marketing agent notices the sale signboard on Marlene's and arrives to share his expertise. Annie keeps telling him to leave but he is a stubborn person who forcefully takes the whole tour of the house. He doesn't leave after that either and sets up a camp outside the house and performs weird rituals to attract more customers. Meanwhile, at the island, Felix is still struggling to get back his cat. Tom suggests that they should leave the cat behind, but Felix can't give up on his beloved pet. He removes the heavy stone and creates a bigger hole to get inside the cave. Thankfully, Rover is completely safe and sound, but Felix notices something really interesting in the cave. He immediately calls Tom and invites him inside the cave. There's a secret passage built inside here. It seems quite old, but definitely has some purpose. Tom believes it only leads to a dead end, so they should get out and continue looking in the forest. But Felix is having a positive feeling and insists on checking out the passage. After crawling for almost an hour, they eventually reach a wall. Tom was right. It is a dead end. They decide to turn back but suddenly notice some light coming from the other side of the wall. After pushing a little, the wall eventually breaks and reveals a hidden community called the Future City. It is discovered by a woman named Morgaya. In this city, everyone stays young, wears special clothes and eats delicious food. And most importantly, they love their mayor, Morgaya. She only allows specific people inside this city, and today another member is arriving. It's the famous multi-billionaire Bruce Bagwell and his family. Morgaya wants to shift her city to a better location, but it's going to cost a fortune. Bruce suggests they only take what's necessary and blasts the rest. He is also willing to generously invest in the development of the city. Morgaya asks about the payment, but Bruce wants his transformation to be carried out first. Morgaya doesn't like the deal and her assistant also suspects Bruce. Though he is a millionaire, his record is full of frauds and shady connections. Despite this, Morgaya agrees to the deal as she really needs an investment to keep her city alive. She takes Bruce to a special lab and covers his eyes. Then she brings a shiny silver spider and lets it bite Bruce. The next day, Morga gathers all the citizens and prepares a show to reveal Bruce's transformation. However, Bruce doesn't go with her plan and makes his entry in a different way. All of his wrinkles are gone and he is turned into a young man. Morga gets really angry as Bruce keeps doing his own things without respecting her opinion. Luckily, Bruce is still ready to pay the full payment he promised, the $1 million. Seeing the money, Morga forgets all her complaints and starts planning her future plans. She tells Klaus to immediately start the construction. By the summer, new living quarters and offices will be ready for the residents of the future city. It may attract attention, but no one is going to suspect them because of Bruce. It's not unlikely for him to live on a private island. Meanwhile, at the town, Marlene has seen the message and immediately calls Annie. After hearing about Felix, Marlene books the next flight to reach home as soon as possible. Annie also does what she can and contacts the rescue team. She tells the officer how Felix looks, and also mentions Tom. After hearing about Tom, the officer gets Calmet as he knows that Tom is the best fisherman and sailor in town. He advises Annie to stop worrying too. They have no idea that Felix and Tom are exploring a hidden city. The residents assume that Tom and Felix are new members, and advise them to get the transformation as soon as possible. Felix notices the guard proceeding towards them so he tells Tom to run away. They keep wandering in the corridors and don't know where to go. Felix suddenly remembers about his backpack and pulls out his dad's hat. Though Rover is a cat, it has many of Dog's characteristics like picking up smell. While the cat tries to locate his dad, Tom uses some marbles and a baseball to defeat the guard. Afterward, they hide in the staircase and throw a slinky to distract the other guard and hit him with a yo-yo. Tom made fun of Felix's backpack, but now he has realized that the stuff he brought wasn't all useless. To avoid further security, Felix and Tom borrow the guard uniform and succeed in getting away easily. Tom's cat, which seems such a burden, is actually quite smart and locates the room where Tom's dad could be. As the door opens, Tom jumps in excitement to see his dad, Jack, on the other side. Jack also can't believe his eyes. After hugging his son and Rover, he also greets Tom and thanks him for bringing his son. Tom also shows a picture of his little sister, 
because Jack disappeared before she was born. Before Jack can explain what he is doing here, Morgea notices them on the security footage and arrives at Jack's room. Surprisingly, she knows Tom, and he also recognizes her. It's Tom's lost girlfriend, Madeline. He can't believe that Madeline hasn't aged for the past 40 years. Jack jumps in the conversation and says that Madeline isn't as sweet as she looks. She is the leader of this evil cult. Madeline starts explaining that she just started a community, and there's nothing evil in that. People arrive here by their own choice and adopt a peaceful lifestyle. However, Jack arrived by accident, and he is not agreeing to Madeline's terms and conditions. She wants to know how Tom and Felix found the city, but suddenly someone's call her for an emergency meeting. Klaus is the one who called her because there's some bad news. The money Bruce gave was fake. Meanwhile, Jack tells Felix and Tom about the reality of this so-called future city. He has been trying to escape for the last two years, but there's no way out. Madeline doesn't allow anyone to leave. Hearing this, Felix mentions the secret passage he found. It can be used to escape this hell. Before Tom can share his opinion, he gets called by Madeline. She offers Tom his favorite tea and reminds him of the time when they visited this island together. They thought that there was a treasure chest hidden somewhere on the island. Tom interrupts Madeline to tell her that he knew that the treasure story wasn't true, but believed it because it fascinated Madeline. On the other hand, Madeline believed the story only because it made Tom happy. One morning during their stay at the island, Madeline woke up to explore the island, but she slipped down on a cliff. She landed right in front of a cave where the treasure was kept. When she got near the treasure, a silvery spider bit her hand. Madeline immediately felt a change in her body. She felt younger and healthier. That's when she realized the treasure is not the gold or jewels. It's the spider which can give immortality and eternal youth. She knew Tom would not keep this secret and may inform the authorities. Therefore, she hid away and kept this treasure to herself. Tom gets really angry to hear that because it was really difficult for him to get over her death. Madeline apologizes and explains that Tom never cared about money because he grew up in a wealthy family, but for Madeline, it was the only chance to change her fate. She has created an enlightened community far from the selfishness of modern society. Madeline wants Tom to join her and share the love they missed out on. Tom declines her offer as he is still doubtful of this community, but Madeline can't let him go because sooner or later, he is going to reveal the secret and people will gather here from every part of the globe to get eternal youth. That can destroy the peace of future city. Tom likes it or not, he has to stay here forever. Later that night, Tom gets kidnapped by Madeline and she transforms him without his consent. The next morning, Tom gets really angry to see what happened to him and asks Madeline how she can do this without his permission. Madeline doesn't seem ashamed at all. She also transformed someone else. It's Bruce who has turned into a baby because of double transformation. Madeline did it to punish him for his deeds. Bruce was also planning another evil strategy. He wanted to steal the equipment from Future City and escape leaving his family behind. After seeing the recorded video, Bruce's wife doesn't protest anymore as her husband was a cheater anyway. Later that night, Felix suggests that they should escape as soon as possible, otherwise Madeline will force them to become a part of her community. Jack is afraid, but Felix reminds him that they have to take the risk or regret their whole lives. Felix uses his cleverness to steal a pass card when Madeline was distracted. Afterward, they wait for others to fall asleep. Once that happens, they sneak out of their room and start looking for the hole where they came from. They must hurry before the security catches them. Tom decides to stay behind to distract Madeline. He doesn't have a family back there in the town anyway. Felix and Jack thank Tom for his sacrifice and they rush towards the exit. Tom goes to Madeline and informs her that he wants to accept her offer. Madeline gets really delighted and eagerly listens to his ideas. While she is distracted, Felix and Jack escape the city. Madeline gets really angry and sends all the security to catch Felix and his father. Felix uses rocks to fight the guards, but there are too many of them and surrounds the poor boy from all sides. Felix promises Madeline that he will not tell anyone about the island if she lets him go, but Madeline can't take the risk. Jack asks her to understand that eternal life isn't a blessing, but a curse. A person who doesn't get old can't evolve. He wants to enjoy every phase of growing old. Before the security can catch them, Tom reaches there with the Morgaea spider. He wants Madeline to let Felix and his dad go. Otherwise, he will throw away the spider. Madeline tries to get back the spider with the help of her guards but fails, and the spider falls out of her jar. Everyone starts fighting to catch the spider, but the poor spider gets accidentally crushed by Madeline. 
All of its magic is gone and everyone returns to the original age. Felix gets on the boat with Tom and Jack and sail back home. His family is waiting at the shore and Marlene can't believe her eyes when she spots Jack. The family is back together. After a few days, the police visit the island and capture Madeline and her crew. Meanwhile, Jack gets back to fishing and also teaches his son and little daughter, because they don't know when the next adventure will arrive.